Hey everybody, Desert Grow Spurt back again with part two of our interview with my man Lunchbox Grows. So Lunchbox, last time we were talking, uh, we had kind of gone over your style of growing um, and kind of where you were at on, on some of the some of your gals um, that you are currently showing off on your YouTube channel. Um, so just to recap, you know, we had gone over germination, veg stage, and, and we were kind of just starting to touch base on, on the flowering stage. Um, so as you're going into flower, um, are you doing any any kind of last minute preparation, getting the plants ready right before you flip or as you flip? A um, little bit. Uh, so about the last week or so of veg, I won't be feeding any veg nutrients. Um, watering will probably just be Tico. Um, CalMag, if it looks like it needs it. Um, and then uh, they'll be in the four gallon pots. So okay. I'll go from the four gallon to the 10 gallon um, fabric pots. And then I'll amend the cocoa with the happy frog. And, and, and when are you transferring? Sorry, I, I wanted to specify here. At age? Uh, yeah, when exactly are you getting ready? Do you transfer before flower or right as you flip? Uh, right as I flip. Okay. Um, so basically, as I'm moving the plant from, you know, veg into flower from the 22 to a 12 hour light cycle, mm -hmm. I'll transplant it and then usually water it with Tico for the first time uh, after the transplant. Um, probably for the first week or two, actually, because of the Happy Frog Amendment. And sure. then beyond that, I'll start to hit it with uh, some of the bloom nutrients. Hey, what 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 was the line you're running again? Botanicare. Botanicare, nice. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, okay, so once you start introducing your sugars, okay, sorry, that's just what I kind of get in the habit of calling. Yeah, molasses, stuff yeah. like that, I do, yeah. Okay, so, so do you do... You do add molasses along with your microbes um no so so when i'm watering or feeding i'll usually kind of concentrate on one aspect of it during any given hydration okay um so like uh one time i'll feed um the tico and then the next time i'll feed uh maybe a mix of molasses and sonic bloom sure and then the next one i'll feed uh uh, some bloom nutrients, some micronutrients. Um, that's pretty much it. Like I, I don't really substitute too much else. Um, if I throw something else in there randomly, it's usually because something looks like it needs it or huh. I'm encountered a problem. So right. with all luck, you know, like everything will go smooth and I'll just kind of alternate the feeding so that I'm not feeding it a large PPM feeding at any given time. Um, unless, you know, it's ready for something like that. Can I add, do you, do you have like, a, um, cause you're growing in cocoa, so I'm not familiar. What, what is kind of like you're on a heavy cycle? What would a heavy feeding look like on the PPM? Um, thousand, 1200, okay. like, sure. I'm not going to go over 1200, but you know, like a thousand is usually like, on a, on a heavy I'm going to go. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to go above that. And on average, I'd say I probably feed more like six, seven hundred. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I, like I said, because I'm not from you know, because being in soil, it's very different. You know, you yeah, yeah, totally own it way down. So I, I was curious, you know, as, as to how high it was actually getting doing in cocoa. So yeah, and it, it, yeah. I feel like with that regiment, it also makes it a little bit more acceptable to do a higher feeding because the Tico is basically like hardly anything on the ppm meter mm -hmm. so when it gets that it's almost like a mini flush or just a watering so it's not like it's i mean i've recently become aware that in a lot of strains and a lot of instances as long as you're not doing like a thousand ppm feeding through flour you can pretty much feed 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 yeah um pigeons 420 was just talking about it um on yeah. his channel yeah a great video i saw that uh, so like i I was doing that before in cocoa, you know, like, um, but as of this grow in veg, I experienced some serious problems with doing that. Um, so probably best not to do it in veg and to stretch it out 
but in flower the plants really need like pretty much everything you can give them so as long as you're phing and and giving them you know enough and not too much mm -hmm. way off the charts right they should be able to handle pretty much anything so in, in flower stage is there a point where uh like for me i don't know what's called but for me after week three i i call it kind of uh don't touch it you know hands off you, you just leave it be at that point do you do anything like that or do you continue to to do any sort of stretching or, or i'm sorry stretching uh i know you're not using a canopy at the time but are you still doing any sort of training bending branches doing anything throughout flowering yeah um so right when they transplant and i put them into flower um on the day of transplant i also i'll pull some of the branches out um tie them down to the edges of the pot not like 90 degrees kind of early stage training but sure. just you know i want to i want to bring that canopy out a good, good bit um so i'll do that and then um yeah i, I fuzzed that's all right at that point are you just kind of like pulling off any dead leaves you might see Oh yeah, the training. Sorry. Um, so after I tie the the branches down to the edge of the pot, um, I'll do uh, a bit of a defoliation there. Usually, it needs a, a pretty heavy defoliation. Um, I trim a lot more leaves than a lot of growers. Not as much as some, but I do a good amount. Uh, so right when I move them into flower, I do a good defoliation to really expose all the new bud sites, and then probably. Two weeks in, I'll do another one that that I, I I'd call my final defoliation. Uh huh. Um, but then still throughout the the cycle, as the buds develop, as the branches develop, I'm gonna clip inward, uh, inward facing leaves. You know anything that's shading the inside of the plant or causing wind restrictions or mm -hmm. airflow restrictions. Yeah. Um. Yeah, pretty much. So and then come harvest like by the time i'm harvesting there's there's not really very many big fan leaves left so i'll spend a few minutes clip the 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 leaves that actually have a branch on them mm -hmm. i'll clip those and then leave all the rest of them and hang them like that so because i've seen you know I, i've seen a couple of your videos i've seen a couple of your photos so you know on that heavy default you know uh, i believe you said week two is it almost like a lollipopping? Are you clearing off that whole like bottom bit or, or is it just you're, you're cleaning off the inside? Yeah. So, um, kind of a mix of both. Uh, I do make edibles. I make concentrates. So I like my have a use for the larf on the bottom. Yeah. So I, I, part of that is, is, rolled into my growing style in the way that I don't take all of it, you know, like yeah. Below yeah. that canopy level, I could probably remove like another 30% of my plants. Gotcha. But ultimately a lot of that, it's still coming out nice and dense. I'm not getting fluffy larf. So like, I apologize that I apologize. That, that's no, no. a term I use for everything below. What yeah, no, it is. It's accurate. It's totally accurate. But it's not like, you know, like that real fluffy. Yeah, like that under it. Yeah. I do get some, especially in the areas of the plant that just get no light. You sure. know, it's going to happen. But as you go down the 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 branches, for example, you know, you have your cola bud and then, you know, your nice bagweed and then popcorn. And mm -hmm. the popcorn is still nice and dense. So it's like, and then below that, you have some larf and on the inside. Yeah. Um, but, uh. So I'm, I lollipop actually still while I'm in veg. So I start the lollipopping process there. Once I realize where the canopy is going to be, uh -huh. obviously these little guys, the, these little ladies are not going to do anything. They're never going to get what they need. So like, I'll start trimming them there. Um, so that once I, once I get to the later point, I don't have to do such a heavy trimming and stress sure. them out. Too. I already take a lot. So I stress them out a good bit. Yeah. Um, uh, but then, yeah, once we're, um, once I, the, like the day that I move them into flower, I'm, I'm doing a significant lollipop there and really making a decision on what I know isn't going to come through week two. When I do that last, that's where like my final lollipopping comes in and I I'll take 
all the remaining stuff that I know at this point is definitely not going to survive. You know, sometimes there's those branches where you're like, oh, that's such a thick branch, but it's so low. Yeah. It could stretch. It could stretch. Sometimes they don't stretch. So Correct. <laughs> but I give them the chance, you know, like I try and give every part of the plant the chance that I can. I, I don't take anything that I don't deem necessary, you know. Sure. I like it, dude. All right. So question so the the immortal uh controversial question flushing do you flush your plants um you harvest specifically yes. is what i'm referring to i want to say yes and no um more recent studies have proven that flushes really don't do anything anyway like the residuals are the residuals and you know the plants doing its off gassing it it doesn't seem to alter test results but minutely, if you're flushing, um, not from my experience, from what I've gathered, you know, mm -hmm. um, but from flushing to, to using newts all the way up to the end day. Now, I don't use newts up to the end day. Um, I'll start using basically just Tico to keep the soil healthy, um, maybe micro, but um, small amounts for about the last week to week and a half. Um, just because at that point, you know, looking at the trichomes, the plant's really not needing as many of those salts that it did as it was starting to build the flowers. Now the flowers are built. They're, they're, we're getting close to harvest. Trichomes are ripening. So in a sense, I'm kind of cleaning the soil. I'm kind of cleaning it up, but I'm not technically flushing. I wouldn't call it a flush. Okay. I, I like it. Yeah. It's not, you know, I, Everyone has uh, their own, you know, obviously there's people that don't do it. There's people that are hardcore into it that go like insane and like completely strip their whatever media they're in, whether it's soil or cocoa, of everything completely. Um, I used to. Yeah. I used to. In my last grow, I was doing it and I would flush probably four gallons of water through each pot sure. and just suck it out the bottom of the shop back. Yeah, you know, it's like hours, and my PPM, sure, I would go way down. I would clear this the the cocoa out of yeah. everything, but I don't notice a difference going the way that I'm going now versus going with that method. Yeah, so I'm gonna save myself that immense amount of RO water, and um, and just yeah, keep doing it's easy what works. Yeah, as, as the universities tell us otherwise, we'll kind of half do it and half not do it because it kind of yeah. works and it kind of don't so who knows right um, kind of, I, I don't know i i kind of chalk flushing up as bro science yeah you know but again i haven't done enough like actual hard research on it to give a definitive answer of what it does and does not do but that's what i do yeah so right after uh okay so we're all the way through flower okay so Something I come across, at, you know, we're both out here in Arizona, uh, drying time. Well, I guess, let me ask, how do you harvest your plants? Are you a chop the whole plant? Are you take the branches and are you a hang it? How, how do you, how do you go about your harvesting? Um, so on harvest day, pull the plant out. I usually just remove it from the, the flower room entirely and, and take it outside. Okay. Um, and then, uh, I'd, like I said, I'll clip off all the all the the leaves that actually have a, a stem on them. Those all go all the smaller leaves and the the leaves that are you know coming out of the buds. Mm -hmm. I leave those. I let them, you know, because it yeah. helps to lengthen the drying process in our dry climate, right? Yeah. I could hang the whole plant, but I find when I do that, it just makes one added step for trimming. And uh, currently, with the cold weather, it's taken right about um five to six days for the for the plants to dry out to the point where i'm good with trimming them gotcha um, so in doing that i guess I, i'll take those fan leaves and then i'll clip each branch um you know i'll clip like a whole branch mm -hmm. and then uh hang that branch from uh from a clip okay um, a little drying rack so i can't stack it I don't remember the name of them. Yeah. Uh, but you just hang them in the tent and they got like 
20, 30 clips on them and you just, you know, clip a branch on. Yeah. I put the tag on there so I know which rack is which plant. Sure. Um, And then, yeah, they, they usually stay in there for about five to six days right now. Um, I've noticed in the summer previously, uh, I've had like three day dry times, which is a pain. But when you have the Bovada, Bovita packs, mm -hmm. uh, it helps a lot to rehydrate. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's uh, something I've always struggled with, you know, so had, same as yourself, you know, having done it a couple of years, starting to figure out, okay, different times a year, a little bit easier, a little bit harder. Um, so yeah, five to six days. That's, that's not bad for where we're at. No, no, I'm happy with that. Like I would, I would prefer five to seven days, you know, like, a, you know, about a week time. Of course. <laughs> that would be ideal for me. But, for us, the holy week of, yeah. of of drying is like, oh man, you're on point if you can do it out here. Yeah, I, I'm just getting lucky right now. That's all that is. <laughs> so did, you said it's a, it's in a tent. You have one of those drying tents with the racks. Um, no, so I, I I happened to just get an extra two by four tent. Okay, um, I did one small grow in it this uh back when i had i had the uh, five by five tents instead of the rooms i'm in now um so i had this separate two by four and i did three sour dark devil auto flowers in them and then after that i never really had another use for it because my five by fives wa was like a crop start to finish so yeah. like you know, i'd plant it grow it scrog it flower it harvest yeah. it and hang it in that tent yeah. and then take everything out trim it up bleach and whatnot yeah uh, now that i'm doing the perpetual cycle i don't really have a place to hang inside the the 10 by 15 shed that i'm in essentially mm -hmm. so in the garage there's two by four and that's where i hang the plants at gotcha the garage is not climate controlled it's pretty cool okay. but i gotcha gotcha sorry i i i miss her i I've been looking at those tents and I'm probably just dreaming. I'm like, oh, you have one? I want one too, man. Well, I kind of set it up with like a, a small duct fan at the uh -huh. top, you know, so like I'm pulling air out of the top sure. and then it's a cube or a rectangle. Yeah. So the bottom left corner is where the uh, the vent is open. Uh -huh. So theoretically, the airflow comes up. Yeah. Through comes up canopy, over it. Up and out, yeah. you know, and then I have a small fan in the bottom to just kind of keep air from being stagnant. Nice. So you just so made a fire or dehumidifier in there right now. Cause I don't seem to need it. Yeah. Yeah. That is, uh, but you know, we are blessed in some ways out here. That is for sure. This time of year is amazing for growing indoors. Yeah. Everyone else is freezing. We're like, man, it's cold. It's like 50, 60. Yeah. So sorry. Getting a little off track there. Uh, okay, so uh, you hang drying. We all hope for that week, you know, right? That's kind of what we're all shooting for. So, yeah. um, you know, trimming, uh, I'm, wet or dry trimming? I do not like wet trimming. Um, the amount of cleaning required on the scissors is just insane. Like, uh, plus handling, uh, the buds are a lot more fragile. You know, the, the terpenes are, and, and trichomes are less likely to fall off, but they're more likely to be damaged. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I prefer a dry trim. It makes it nice and easy. And by dry, I mean like 70%, 80 at max, but like 70%, you know, a little above what you would want to cure at. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I get, you know, something that I can manicure decently easy. While at the same time not having to rush through it because ah my weed's drying, right, right, yeah, especially with harvest time when it's like oh my god, you know you're all excited until trim time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean I like I I don't hate trimming. I I hate the neck ache that comes along with it. Yeah, but I mean at least I get to spend a day sitting on the couch watching decent movie or well having decent movies on that yeah you know you, just you hear going on <laughs> exactly 
throw the trim bin on my lap and just go to town. Nice. Uh, curing, you know, a lot of people are using using those new bags. I see like the Z or C faults, the vault container kind of getting big now. Um, how do you go about the cure? Um, I've heard of a lot of different things that are out right now. Um, I haven't tried really any of them. I just stick to the tried and true method of the mason jar. Gotcha. After trimming, if it's super moist still, like if I trimmed early or, you know, before it had a chance to hit that 70% mark, I'll usually leave the buds out like for, I don't know, the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. And then I'll throw them in a mason jar. Otherwise, either way, they go in a mason jar, um, lid on it, and then they go in a dark room for, you know, the next couple of weeks. Aside from the hourly, early hourly burping and the, you know, a couple times a day when they're fresh in there and then like once a day after about a week or so. And are you, are you throwing in those little like cheap hydrometer little to, to be able to check it? These guys. Yeah, those guys. Yeah. I've got a ton of them. Yep. Yeah, they're super cheap. Yeah. Uh, really exactly. easy to keep track. <laughs> Throw one of these in there, and then um, I know based on that whether or not it's time to throw one of the Bovada packs in there, you know. Yeah. And I get the 50%. The big packs for the half gallon mason jars. And I've even, like, I, those things last, dude. Like, I, I've had them, like, in mason jars with weed for, um, like a couple months and then the, the jar dwindles down to you know nothing right, 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 right. Bags in, as, in a ziploc and you know that they're really not good anymore if you squeeze them and you feel crystals inside mm -hmm. uh, they'll start to crystallize and at that point they're not hitting their humidity level anymore so once you feel any of that they're time to go but i mean yeah like you could use the same pack as long as the pack isn't contaminated jar to jar you know yeah you don't care too much about that a couple times nice yeah definitely being able to reuse it is is good some of those get pretty expensive especially i've seen some of those like the bigger ones for like yeah you know i don't i don't know what those, that are, jars. those are the ones i'm talking about they're like um yeah 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 those huge ones yeah like a four by six index card something like that yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah, those those are perfect for a half gallon mason jar, and okay. you can buy like a box of them online. Ah, uh, yeah, nice. And, and then, how long do you normally? We all dip in the cookie jar, okay? We don't need to talk about about testing because you got to you got to test. But how long do you normally cure for? What's your like goal that you shoot for? Uh, at least a month. I like to wait a month before like. I'm really observing the the flavors, the profile, paying attention to what the the flower actually is. Yeah, like you said, you know, like we're gonna get into it and smoke it before that. Nobody can really resist when it's sitting right there. Right. Um, but yeah, I'd say after two weeks, you're probably gonna start seeing a lot more of the flavor profile and the the aromas come through. And then after a month, um, for the most part, I find them pretty much to be set in. So like after about a month, I'm smoking on it. Um, I think ideally they say a year is is the perfect cure time. Isn't that what the all the cannabis cup winners are? They're like a, yeah. about a year cure. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean that that takes some serious willpower. I, unless I have that much of an abundance, I don't think I could ever do that. Right. There's that too. <laughs> you know. Hey, maybe someday. You know, maybe, maybe someday I can be like, oh, I forgot about this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put it in a dark corner inside the pocket of a pair of jeans somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Clothes that I would never wear. There you go. Yeah. Put it in there. Dude, I love it, man. So, and, and dude, thank you for coming on. Um, You know, I, I think we kind of hit the whole kind of grow start to finish. Um. And again, uh, we can see all this stuff on your channel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, I'm doing uh, my channel is focused on my progressive grow. So uh, every video is going to be an update either on one specific aspect of the grow, but generally it'll be like 
an overview of everything that's going on in the garden right now on that day. So from my seeds to my teens, to my veg, to my flower, to the harvest, and then post harvest, uh, we'll go over, like, you know, we'll evaluate the weed, we'll look at it. Um, uh, I have, um, detailed notes on all the grows, all the plants. Okay. So you know, when we're evaluating it, testing it, tasting it, blah, blah, blah. Um, I can go through and figure out like, oh, this, this particular plant I noticed was highly resistant to powdery mildew, or this one took like hardly any training. This one's monster buds, you know? So like at the end of each harvest, essentially we can go over and, and evaluate the strains and maybe I can help somebody determine what might be better for them to grow in their garden, whether yeah. it be for height restrictions or you know, what they're doing. Even, you know, and again, everyone's on a different, you know, uh, path, but like, even like a, a, a beginner plant, you know, one that's real easy that just like don't need to do anything versus like one that uh, maybe like a long-term, you know, uh, in a 12 week flower, uh, kind right. of one of those more advanced you got to take care of because you got to take care of it for longer so it's not your normal regimen of of feedings of you, you got to plan it differently because there's a whole nother month added to it so addressing that with any luck i won't have to do that because <laughs> i'm basing my flower room on a 60-day harvest so i'm really okay. aiming to try and do um mostly indicas and mostly uh fast flowering strains you know okay. something that i can look forward to being done at 60 days because unfortunately i'm, I'm going to be evaluating trichomes but unfortunately regardless of that in most cases um i don't think i'm going to have the space to be able to let one go for like an extra month or something like that you know so like i don't want to have to do premature harvests but sure. of course there's going to be that anomaly you know there's going to be that sativa that comes in and it's like but that's that's the other part of the channel you, you know like if i experience something like that a headache a setback a deficiency um an infestation anything like that you're going to see it i'm not going to hide it you know like you're going to see what's going on in my garden throughout the garden throughout the year um throughout the process and what i do to try and rectify situations and whether or not it works you know so like it's not just going to be yeah my garden's perfect all the time you know it's the the real thing yeah yeah i i you know i gotta tell you i'm, I'm super pumped because like i said i was looking at your channel you got a lot of good pm preventive maintenance you know pest control tips tricks you know i i, I see the i see that library building of like being able to really help people out you know with problems because it's no grow is perfect. You know, it doesn't matter how experienced you are. And it's not, you know, pests are are not uh if, it is a when, because you will get yeah. something. 100%. Yeah. So just real quick, what uh currently, what's in the garden? What can we look forward to? I'm getting ready to harvest some, uh, well, I just harvested Mendo Punch and uh georgia pie and then uh, on the 10th i'll be harvesting uh some rubber glove and then um all of those plants are plants that i was gifted as clones um to re-get my my garden going sure um beyond that everything in the garden i've started from seed and will continue to start from seed so everything's going to be a seed to harvest grow Okay, after um, these guys are done. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right now, I've got some Sweet D growing, which is uh, Sweet Cheese and Josh D Cookies Cross. Uh, I call her Sweet D because she's yeah. beautiful. I mean, like, you can't look at Sweet D and not smile. Exactly. So, and you know you get the reference. Uh, so, and then uh, several other strains. Um, once a month, I'm putting three new seeds in. So every month, those three seeds are going to be the same strain. Um, and I'll grow three plants side by side. Unless I'm trying to conserve or something like that. I might go two and one, something like that. But in most cases, I'm going to try and do three plants at a time side by side so we can see all three of them come out. I might train plant one 
with super cropping. I might mainline plant two. I might not touch plant three. Sure. You know, kind of see how each one reacts. Yeah. What training method might be better for this particular pheno? Yeah. And uh, where, where are you getting your seeds from? Are you buying online or are you getting them from like here in Arizona? Um, I got some of our seed or some of my seeds from uh, our local shop. Mm -hmm. And then um, mostly I'm trying to get as the best genetics that I can. So uh, I'm going directly to the breeders or, or to the originators of the strain if I can help it. Nice. Um, so generally online okay nothing wrong with that i was just curious you know that's oh uh, yeah you know a lot of there's a lot of like new uh, uh uh breeders in our in our state that are trying to get going you know not all are our hits but you know it's early we'll we'll give it time right i'm trying to stick with some of those og like the the guys that have been in the game for a long time that really have their stuff down you know like if i'm going to be doing a channel where i'm i'm putting informational stuff out i want to make sure and be able to start from you know something that i can base my work off of being you know a dependable starter you know like i want to make sure that i have good genetics and i'm not you know likely to be growing herms because it's genetic and not something i'm doing wrong you know right yeah, that's that is a tough, tough go. Cause then it especially if it's depending on like how many you get, is it like was well, it genetics or did like then you gotta like check your room, see if there's something off and exactly. Yeah, that's and if you're doing a seed to harvest, you know, from like an a, a reputable online source, you know, then followers can can grow along with you if you know totally. they get their hands on it too. Yeah, maybe I'll do like, ah, get your seeds ready. In two weeks, I'm going to be planting these from these guys. There you go. Do it together. That's do a great a idea. Along. Dude, I'm down to do a grow along. Uh, All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Especially like, uh, you know, maybe we should uh, bring this up at our next local get together. It's going down. The think, seed has been planted, if you I will. Literally. literally <laughs> not yet. We'll wait. But... <laughs> Yeah, I think that'll be great. Cool. So, dude, that's awesome. So, and, and just go ahead and tell us one more time. Obviously, I'm going to go ahead uh, uh, and have your link down in the description below and links all over the video up top. But tell us again, where can people find you at? Launchbox Grows on YouTube. Awesome. Any other social media we could find you, or is this kind of your home base? That's it where I'm at now. Um, like I said, I'm, 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 my my channel's pretty new. I'm starting to work on growing it. As I grow my channel, I'm gonna branch out to other networks or uh, social platforms, rather. Sure. Uh, but right now, just YouTube. Awesome. Yeah, like I said, I'll definitely leave the link all over the place. It'll be right here at the end of this video. Um, but yeah, I, I appreciate you so much coming on, um, sharing how you grow and and, and you know. A whole different style than anything I've ever done. So this is a whole wealth of knowledge I'm I'm not used to. So this is nice. wonderful. I, I got a lot of good tips and pointers from you too. So it's been nice going back and forth. Oh um, man, you know this is some. This topic is something I could yak on about all day long. <laughs> you just leave the cameras on twenty four hours. I literally just sit here smoke and just. Oh, and another thing. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Like I said, go ahead and click that link below. That'll get you guys right over to his channel. Plus, I will go ahead and leave one of his videos right here in the middle. Make it real easy to go ahead and find him. Thank you guys for tuning in. Lunchbox, thank you so much for joining me today. For both of these, we needed the part two. This was wonderful. I, I, I love it, man. Thank you. Thank you, dude. I had a lot of fun. Dude, awesome. All right, everybody, I will see you guys next time. You know where to find us.